210 gigabytes worth of size, 728 gigabytes size on disk, composing of 557.9 thousand files and 424.8 thousand folders. That is how big my Plex data directory is. Actually, to be completely honest, it's larger than that, but after an hour and 10 minutes of waiting for it to finish calculating, I gave up and just started recording this video. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. Now, I gave you the size of my Plex data directory, not to be confused with the media directory. Now, the difference here is that the Plex data directory contains all of the poster arts, the thumbnails, the metadata, everything you need for the Plex media server to function. Whereas the media directory itself could be a number of different locations spread out between, you know, the computer it's hosted on or even network locations. And these are literally just locations where the media files are being held. So the point of today's video is to discuss how you could essentially supercharge your Plex media server if you happen to be using a standard hard drive right now now to store your Plex data directory, and also if you just happen to have a very large library. Now that is important because the larger your library, the more thumbnails and poster arts and metadata you have all to be stored on your Plex data directory. Now, if you're familiar with file systems at all, how hard drives work versus SSDs, you probably already know this. But just in case you don't, if you have a large amount of files, particularly small files that have to be recalled very quickly in order to allow your server to function smoothly, a standard hard drive is gonna have to spin around, find the sector, read the little clusters, and then give you that information. Information. Whereas an SSD will be able to find and locate and provide you with the same data tons more faster than what a standard HDD can. Now this same supercharge idea goes directly over to something like running your Windows operating system off of an SSD versus a hard drive. It's the same exact principle here, it's just used as a media server functionality. So I will try to give a couple different examples on how you can change your Plex data directory. And the examples I'm going to be using today is one will be on a Windows server and two will be on an Unraid server because, well, those are the two that I use all the time. One for testing and one for daily use. To change this on a Windows server, it's actually super easy. All you have to do is add the SSD to the server and then you just go into your settings, into your server underneath the generals tab if you don't see options here, you click advanced and you can see the Plex data directory option right here. All you have to do is change this to a different location, wherever the SSD is and the folder location that you want it to be pointed at. You click on save and boom, you are done. Eh, almost. Keep in mind here that you probably already have Plex data that you need to be able to read and write to. So this is essentially moving your Plex media server, although it's not from one computer to another, it's from one location on the server to a different storage location. So you will need to find your pre-existing Plex media server data folder and move it to the new location that you transferred it to. Actually, a while back, I did make a video discussing how you can back up and restore your Plex data directory. You can see that up in the cards above. You will need to take this step in order to ensure that your Plex Media server continues to function as it normally did. However, this time, hopefully, it'll run a lot faster. Now, Unraid makes it a little bit more interesting because for me, in order to have a separate Plex SSD as I do, I had to take an SSD, install it into the server, and then use a plugin called Unassigned Devices to mount it separately from my cache drive. But once you have that assigned in your Unraid separately from your cache drive, or however you decide to do it, you will have to go into your Plex media server docker application settings to change a variable to make sure it's pointing to that SSD. So for example, from your main screen, if you click on the Plex media server, click on edit, you'll scroll down. You might have to go down to the advanced section and then expand that. And then from here, you should see something like slash config. And all you would do is point this directly to the new SSD that you mounted. But again, you will need to move over your Plex media server data in order to carry on the normal usage of your Plex media server. In my particular instance, I made it super simple for myself where I just made a share and I moved the stuff over manually. However, if you're handy with SSH, you can just putty right into your server and you can tell the server to copy the files directly over through that interface. It would be much quicker doing it that way rather than relying on Windows to do it for you. Now, using this method, 
method to switch over to an SSD for only your Plex Media data. If you've moved from a standard hard drive and maybe you have a large library, you should notice a considerable difference in speed with the overall usage of your Plex clients. This can be anything from browsing and loading poster arts to loading the different description screens, moving around from different libraries, etc. Everything should just feel a lot smoother, a lot faster, and overall just be a better experience. Well, guys, that's it for today's Plex Bits. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, post them down below. Thank you for watching. As always, like and subscribe below and have yourself a good day.